pissed. I'm pissed. Yep, I'm pissed. You're probably wondering, why is this guy so mad? Is it the car? Is it that bad? It's actually not the car. It's me. I'm mad at myself. And you're probably wondering why. Well, you see, when this car was first introduced that Acura was going to make an Integra Type Pass, I got an email from a good friend of mine, Chris, who works at an Acura dealership. He sent me all the details, the pricing. And of course, the first thing that came to my mind was that this was just, well, an overpriced Civic Type bar. And after driving this thing for a week, oh boy, was I wrong. I was a bit cautious because I thought it's gonna be a front wheel drive, it's gonna have a six speed manual transmission, it's gonna make the same horsepower, it's gonna drive the same because they share quite a lot, minus the fact that this does make more horsepower, but everything else is very much the same, mechanically, of course. But now that I have driven it, I have a totally different perspective and how different these two cars drive. And here's the perfect way to describe this. I had the Civic Type R three weeks ago. I drove it for a full week. And this week I drove the new Integra Type Pass. And I came up with the idea that these cars are so similar yet so different at the same time. Mechanically, the cars are very much the same, but when it comes to design, they're totally different. They're so far apart that I think this over here, the Integra Type Pass, is far more sexier. In fact, today, when I went to a shopping mall, I saw the new Civic Type R in white, and I was looking at them side by side. There's no comparison. This car is so sexy, it is so sporty, and it's got the perfect lines all around. Like, let's start with the front and the aggressive bumper design, the aggressive grille, the vented hood, the entire lines of this car just gives you a total different view in terms of how it's designed in comparison to the Civic Type R. The headlights are sexy. The Integra badge on the right side, it's got all the good stuff. Then we move on to the side profile. We got 19 inch wheels. These are beautifully designed and carved 19 inch wheels. But I have to say, I would pick the bronze color over the gun metal that we have for today's video. We have Brembo brakes in the front, four piston painted in red, of course, continuing with that performance experience all around the spirit of sportiness. Two piece rotors in the front. In the back, we got a single standard rotor but painted in red the calipers the tires of course the best that you can get the michelin tires these are fantastic for track use we have seen it on other vehicles 
The next thing I want to talk about is this wide fender that this thing has. I absolutely love the design of this thing. I got nothing to complain about this vehicle. Moving on to the side profile over here, although in terms of the wheelbase, they're pretty much the same as a Civic Type R. There's a few differences. Like you can tell the way this thing is carved out at the back. The rear fender is not the same as the front one where it's connected the entire body panel. This is separate. So you have the top part and then you have the attached portion, which gives it that wide fender design. Now, you're probably wondering why did they do that? Well, because you can't jeopardize the integrity of the structure. So in order for them to make this as a wide body, they had to change the entire thing. So to fix that, they basically attached it to make it wider. But most importantly, though, they have completely cut that part out to insert the a wide fender option. Love the design of this thing all the way through. Looking at this from the roller size, it is absolutely sexy what they've done. I don't like this car. I love this thing just the way it looks. I like the Civic Type part that has the massive wing at the top. The Integra is a bit more settled, but it does have the lip on top of the front just to give it an aggressive look. And you do get the option to purchase a carbon fiber one, which costs about $2,000 in Canada. You have the Type Pass badge on the left side and Integra on the right side for the bumper. Now, here's the interesting part is that the diffuser is more aggressive than the Civic Type R because that's where they put the most of the design. The work has been done on the diffuser and I gotta say, they have done a fantastic job. This thing has a real stance. You look at it from every angle, it's beautiful the way they have designed this thing. The exhaust at the bottom, of course, you got a three uh, tip exhaust system, but the design of this uh, exhaust system, it's different in comparison to the Civic Type R because this offers a single massive one in the middle and then two small ones on the sides. And it does sound a lot better than the Civic Type R. Besides the fact that this thing looks great, it's also a fantastic daily car. So let's start first with the trunk. This thing has a lot of space under here. Let me show you. I have my equipment. We have this big case. There's more space onto the side. You can fold the seats all the way through. There is a subwoofer on the right side because this is equipped with the ELS audio system. It's got about 12, 13 speakers all around. Beautiful sound system. But the amount of space that you get with this thing really impressed me. The Civic Type R was a bit smaller because the way it is designed, it's more towards of a hatchback in comparison to this, which kind of looks like a sedan overall, but not really. Kind of like a Grand Coupe mixed with a sedan altogether. I love the fact that you get the space because it makes it not just a track car, but also a fantastic daily car. If you have just one child, you're married, this thing will do the job great. Here's another example, space-wise. I do believe you get the option to pick five seats for the Integra Type S in comparison to the Civic Type R, which only offers four seats. But I'm 6'2", and I'm very comfortable in the back. In fact, I had my son with a child seat on the right side, my wife in the back, the stroller, of course, in the trunk, and I was the driver, and we could all fit nice and comfortably without any problem. I love this thing just for the fact that you can make it also into a daily car because a lot of cars are either focused more towards being sporty rather than daily. This does both fantastically well. I'm well impressed with this thing. Even the interior, the beautiful leather, we've got these two cup holders in the center, which are similar to the Civic Type R. But overall, this thing definitely has more space than the uh, Civic Type R. And you can tell that just by looking at me here. It is the same thing when you jump into the front seats. The first thing you notice is that this has a bit more premium interior. Let's start with the seats. These are not the same bucket style that you find in the Civic Type R. These are fantastic for day to day. They still hug you nicely. They're a bit of a bucket, but not too much. They got that daily style with the bolsters, everything. The center one is, of course, the Alcantara or suede, whatever you want to call it. Then you have the leather with beautiful red stitching all around. Type Pass badge at the top, full power seats for the driver's side. I believe the passenger, it is manually adjustable, but the driver gets the full treatment all the way through. And the next thing you notice is that this does share quite a lot with the Civic Type R. Like for example, the cluster is the same, but 
this does get a heads up display. The next thing that this gets is the design of the dashboards. Unlike the Civic Type R, which has the honeycomb style all the way through in here in the center, this has it in split. So you got the right side for the vents and then you have the left side beside the driver, uh, steer beside the steering wheel and in the center, it is a much smaller design. But unlike the Civic Type R, this doesn't have an R mode. It does have Sport and Sport Plus and individual and of course comfort. It is used a six-speed manual transmission, but I have to say one thing that bothers me for the shift knob is the stitching behind it, which it is a little bit uncomfortable for me. It's not unbearable, just a bit uncomfortable because the stitching really kind of scratches my hand as I'm shifting because most people have their hand on top. I keep it on the side. That's a little bit of an adjustment, but of course you can change that. It's not a big deal. In terms of the layout for the infotainment display, it is pretty much the same as you'd find in the Civic Type part. The difference is that this has a different configuration and of course the colors are different. This doesn't get the performance pages that the Civic Type R has. I couldn't find it. Maybe this model doesn't have it, but what I'm reviewing right now doesn't come with. Under the hood, the Civic Type R and the Integra Type Pass, well, share the same engine. In fact, they share similar engine to the previous generation Civic Type R. The difference is now the turbo is different. It got eight blades. It has a different software tweaks to make more horsepower. And the Integra Type Pass makes 320 horsepower and the Civic Type R makes 315, but the torque is the same. The six-speed manual transmission is the same. Even the active damping is the same. The difference is that the Integra Type Pass does have a different, well, similar design exhaust system to the Civic Type R, just a few tweaks to make it sound differently, a bit more distinctive sound exhaust to the, specifically to the Integra Type Pass. But having said that, after driving both these two cars back to back and around the track and drag race the Civic Type R and daily driven the Civic Type R, the driving experience is totally different in my opinion. The good news is that I drove the Civic Type R not too long ago, in fact, about two weeks, which makes me have a bit of a fresh memory on how that thing drove and sort of compare it to this, because that's the whole idea. These cars are so similar, they should be the same because mechanically they're the same. But I've learned <laughs> after driving this for a week, they're not. They're actually so different in driving dynamics that either Honda is lying about it because they said they shared a lot of things and they're about the same, or I'm just, well, I'm getting a, the wrong impression about this thing. But I did have someone else drive both cars and they agreed. So that means I'm not crazy. Now you're wondering, what's different? I'll tell you what's different. One, it's that, the exhaust sound. Two, it's the road noise. You don't hear it as much in here. You don't hear every single crack off the road in this car. You don't. It's actually super quiet in comparison to the Civic Type R. And also those pops, they're not available in the Civic Type R. Of course, with the aftermarket, yes, but not stock. I love playing with that. Okay, into fifth. Up, 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 up. I, I love that. It's not obnoxious, it's not quiet, it's perfect. The next thing is, of course, the suspension setup. I'm gonna put this in comfort mode. And here's the difference. In comfort mode, the Civic Type R, you felt like this too. It wasn't extremely stiff, it doesn't remind me of the Focus RS, but it was a bit like that. This, on the other hand, in comfort mode, it's comfortable. I've actually been driving this for a full week and I've done long trips as well, not too long, two hours, but still, just enough to give you an idea how this thing drives in comfort mode. And let me tell you that there's a difference between the two cars. I think the Type R is a bit more of a track car 
than it is a daily car for some people. For me, a bit stiff now that I've driven this. It is not just a souped up Civic Type R. I think this is better than the Civic Type R. Now, that comes down to you. You need to drive them back to back and then find out which one you like. Maybe you do like that giant wing in the Civic Type R, which I'm sure you can probably buy and just add it to this. I wouldn't. Or maybe you just like that uh, boy racer experience kind of thing. This, in my opinion, is for people that are 35 and up. 30 and up, actually, in some cases. It's more mature, it's more conservative, it's well balanced, $55,000 Canadian. If you can get an MSRP, this car is fantastic. And I am pissed because I ordered a car already. I bought it, it's coming this week, it's a daily car, but this could have been my daily car. And I am too late in ordering one or also buying one at this point. And that, my friend, is why I am pissed. So, I'm going to enjoy this while I have it because tomorrow, well, actually, nope, I have one more day. The day after tomorrow, I have to drop it off. And he sentenced me a little bit. I love this. Love this.